Hello everybody and welcome to another RT2629 restoration video. In this episode, Tim gets his hair cut, long overdue. And also in this episode, more importantly, we start putting the engine back into this bus. Now it's been a long drawn out process. Tim has traveled up and down the country finding spare parts for the engine. It's been a real struggle trying to find bearings, pistons, liners, filters, all sorts, but we finally got all the bits we need. So the engine can start going back together again. Now, Lord Barrington is with us this week. He's on his way here now as I speak. So I think what I'm gonna to need to do first is put the kettle on for when he arrives and then we'll get into it, we'll start work. Okay, so the liners have been in probably since the engine was built, which we believe is probably late 1940s, and as was rather to be accepted, they don't want to come out. So what I'm doing is I'm relieving the stress out of the liner by cutting a slot using a um, carbide tip in an air tool. That's taking most of the strength out of the liner because being a tube, if you can take the strength out of one side of it, it means it's not held in quite so tightly. So we're relieving the liner, and then what we're gonna do, or what we have done already with, with two of them, is we then weld, quite a considerable weld, up either side of the slot, and then cool it very quickly with water, and that actually makes the liner go more like a figure of eight, and it actually lifts the piece that's been relieved away from the bore of the actual engine block, allowing us to then drift the liner out. Um, some of them have come out of pullers, some of them are having to drift out, but either way, that seems to be our only option. What we're doing is we're honing out the block, ready to accept the new liners. So as it's all nice and clean, so with our nice new liners, we can just push them straight in, having frozen them. That's the theory, anyway. We've put some light oil in here, as suggested by the liner manufacturer, as being an acceptable practice. So we're now ready to put a liner in. So let's see what happens. It certainly can. <laughs> Is that straight? Right, in for a penny, in for a pound. See if you can see from that end of that straight. Because I'm fairly confident it's fairly upright. Did you say? It's about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, keep going. 
So the first line is in. Not really quite the professional way to do it with block of wood and hammer. But since we destroyed my puller trying to get the old ones out, we are it's half past seven, something like that in the evening, seven o'clock in the evening, and we're a bit short of other equipment that we can beg, borrow, or steal anywhere locally. So a block of wood and a hammer with them frozen was the decided favourite choice tools. And in fairness, it's worked, so we can pursue the rest of them and we'll. Uh, We'll carry on, push on and get the other five in. I think it's the gist, gist of it now. So that's where we're at. So one's in, another five to go. There we go. Amazing how quickly they Six up liners on. fitted. Six liners fitted without any of the proper engineering tools necessary. Just one fairly decent sized Birmingham screwdriver and for you guys doing at home, a piece of B&Q fence post. Just go in there and ask me if you buy a foot of it. Well, after hours and 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 a few more hours, we're ready to start putting the crank back in the engine and start building the block back together. Um, it's not been without its problems, has it, Tim? No. We're getting there. So now the, the main bearings are going back in and we can put the crank back in. Cap on the bearings, you want it? Well, that's what we'll have to do. Probably put the caps on with the with the other bearings in and just line them all up. Because again, I've done that basically centre because there's no rhyme or reason as to where they go. Yeah. What you can do if you like is the other halves need cleaning, setting in the caps. The caps should have the lightly. See these are numbered. Yeah. The caps should have numbers as well. Clean the bearings, put them all in the caps, and then um, we then need to put the caps on just to make sure that the dimples locate, yeah? Make sure we haven't got the bearings on in the wrong place. Um, and then we should be good to go. Just need to set them in the caps, basically. Um, clean them up with braking clutch first, then set them in the caps, and then we just need to gently put the caps on and just make sure that everything lines up and make sure we've got the the dimples in roughly in the right places i.e. make sure the, cap, the bearings are roughly in the right places and once we've done that we then need to
braking clutch with cloth off the bearings again. Let's make sure there's no debris sitting in them. Where's that down? Is that down? Is that exactly? A, would you say it's exactly three o'clock? That down. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So you'd say that's about. You would say that's about TDC, right? Yeah. I think. That's what I said, it'd be a bit of an arse. Just the tiniest bit. Whoa, whoa, too far. Uh, hold on. No. We are leaning down in though. Yeah, no, I know that. I'm not doing that, I'm it up on the block webs. Hold on. Let's see where these tiny marks are. Down oh, fucking way, you. Yeah, spot on. I'm happy that's timed up. Put it this way, that's where the crank was before, mm. so it ran all right before, so we'll assume that the timing is correct. Which end is starting these caps? Um, it doesn't matter. Don't forget we can't fit number one fully anyway because we haven't cleaned the oil pump out yet. Gaskets made, sealant on the face of the crankcase and on the top of the gasket, so that's in place. We've cleaned all the tappet bucket apertures. Cylinders are Cranks in, something. cylinders are in, liners are in. The top of the deck has been faced to get the liners flush with the top of the block. Been honed out, we're happy with the piston gap, so we're now ready to put the block on the crankcase. Are you feeling strong? Jesus. We need to go, find me a judge. We block needs to do that too. Let's go forwards and, and like that slightly. Let me get this. Done. On. On. Not coming back off. As you've seen so far. We've put the crank back into the block and uh, into the crankcase, and we've put the block back onto the top of the crankcase. That's now all bolted back together. Um, Tim has now gone back home to London. Um, I've had my hair cut, as you've probably noticed. And uh, me and Dave are now going to put the rest of it all back together. Um, we've got most of the bits now, it's just changing bearings making sure everything's clean, putting the pistons back together, getting the heads back on, putting all the cover plates and everything else back together. 
So, still lots to do, but we're moving along. Right, well I'm back after a short little breakaway, a much needed holiday, and I'm well impressed with the progress that Tim and Lord Barrington have made on the rebuild of this engine so far. There is still an awful lot of work to do though, and I'm well and truly back in at the deep end, and today my job is to change the bearings inside these connecting rods. One half out. And there's the other half. Right, going to temporarily put it back together, give it all a good clean, and then we'll put the new bearings in. So that's one down, five to go. Got it. There's always one stubborn one. All these old bearings we're keeping because you never know when you might need them again and whilst they're not brand new they're not perfect it's better than having none at all especially when you know about the trouble that Tim went to find new ones of these he traveled the length and the breadth of the country for weeks he done thousands of miles picking up bits like this that are as rare as hen's teeth nowadays so these are all being kept. Okay, so the next job is to put the little end bearings, which I've machined out at home, to the right size for the good pin, back into the connecting rod. Now, sadly we haven't got a press, and uh, We've just got to improvise slightly. So, there you go back on there like that. Into the edge with the lip. And then, with Dave's help, that goes back onto here. Similar to the way we got them in. That goes back onto there and make sure we get it all square. Okay. That's not square anymore. There we go. One down, another five to go. Well, after this, we won't need to go to the gym tonight. 
Let's not go that, on the rowing machine instead. Not that we go to the gym. And as you can tell, we're all full of cold and flu. Who brought that into the unit, Tim? Um, I don't know. Alan bought COVID two years ago. And autumn 2022, Tim has introduced us now to the flu. I've had it, George has had it, he's had it. Sarah and the kids had it? Not yet. Oh. You told them what they've got coming. Yes. They've been warned. That's why we all sound funny. It's not the microphone's gone funny. Yeah. It's the, uh, we've got the flu. If our voices are a bit croaky and a bit rough, it is fault. Last one. Is this the last one? Good, because I need a cup of tea. And some Lemsip. Hang on. We're all out of... A bit? Yeah. Last one done. Now we just need to drill a little oil holes and then we can run the hone through the centre just to clean it up, um, make sure the pins fit nicely. Okay, so while Tim is sorting out the little ends, it's my job to sort out the new big end bearings. Now, as you can see, these are what you call new old stock. Now the company that Tim got these from in Shrewsbury, have had these on the shelf for 25 years and this was the last set they had and they won't be stocking them anymore. As you can see, they've been wrapped very carefully and looked after, but they are covered in a thick gunge sort of protective grease and I've got to clean every single one of them. It's like glue. So as you can see I've got most of it off one side but on the other side it's thick and horrible. So we're going to try putting it in a bit of boiling water. There's 12 of these to do, it's going to take me all day. That's better. Right. Six pairs of big end bearings, all nice and clean. Let's just go into this mess. What we're doing here is honing the little end bearings <coughs> and we've fitted them. It's just taken the sides down very slightly so they just want honing out until the pins fit nicely. It's nearly there, not quite. But it's not far away because you can get it to hold the pin. So it's a little bit more and then it'll go in. There we go. Perfect fit. First two. First one in there. In the caps. Right, 
Back on that. There we go, it's that fitted. Back on to the end of the connecting rod. And all ready to put the piston back on. Okay, so I'm just making sure that there's no dust or little bits of filings or anything that's been in the air on the big end journals. Make sure they're all, they're all nice and clean, and then we'll wipe the balls in. Take the big end bearing caps off the bottom of the connecting rods, and then put them in with the ring compressor and slide them up until we can put the end cap back on at this end. That's going to go up there. Well, it put up a bit of a fight, but we got the first one in. Now, sadly, the big ends we've got hold of are the wrong bearings. Um, therefore, they're most likely oversized bearings in the wrong box. So, therefore, if the crank had been ground down to a, a size below, well, we don't really want to grind the crank because it's not at the point where it needs grinding. Um, the old bearings measure up okay, um, so they're going to go back in for now and then I'll probably keep hold of the other bearings and if we have to have the crank ground in the future then we've got the bearings to go back in. Um, but at the moment it doesn't need doing so we're going to put the old big end bearings back in but it's all part of the trouble of you can't get hold of the parts anymore and they're, uh, they're getting less and less. So here's the old one we took off yesterday. See how it fits nice on there, whereas this is the new one, it's not quite fitting correctly. So all that work you had me doing yesterday was for bloody nothing. Right, you go the other end. And just tap it gently because we need to get the rings before they spring. Do you want me to tap it with anything or? I'll just give it a push back with it by hand, it should do. So here we go, back together for the second time. Well that's going to be a lot easier. What have you done differently with that one? Put more oil in it, I think. All the nuts are now chalked up and I've split pinned them all, so uh, it's just a safety measure in case anything did come loose. They've all got split pins through and I've rebuilt the oil pump and put that back on. All we've got left now is the oil pipe that runs along here to the, uh, the box that the strainer box sits in and we can put the sump back on. Right. Do you know if we can not to sort of smear it a bit? Go up your end. Oh, 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 oh. That's it. Mm -hmm. 
So what we're doing here is lock wiring these belts and this is mainly to, if anything did unfortunately rattle loose or come loose, it'll stop it undoing itself all the way and it'll also stop the belts falling in the sump or causing damage to the engine, which wouldn't be very good. These are locking wire pliers, so what these do is spin in like that and you pull the bottom, twist the wire and then what we do here is this goes up through there like that and then we bring that round there to that side put that on there So what happens here is if that tried to undo, that's going to pull that bolt tighter. And if that tried to undo, it's going to pull that one tighter. So they work against each other. Right, now that is everything torqued up, lock wired and split pinned. It's time to put the sump back on this engine. But before this sump can be refitted to the engine and we get all the gaskets on and everything, it needs a bit of a degreasing. So I'm about to do that with some brake and clutch cleaner. So do you want to start on this? Yeah, in there. <coughs> oh. Watch it down. Yeah. So strainer box back in. Right, now the engine is back upright over there. There's still a lot of stuff to go on this engine before it's ready to go back on the bus. The flywheel that Tim's working on right now, that needs sorting out, the heads need going on, and all these other little bits and pieces have all got to go onto the engine. Doesn't look like a lot, but I think there's still a lot of work here to do. The, the extra holes, that's the, that's the pin. That's the pin there? Yeah. That's that pin there? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Try again. There's the pin. Right, come round. Uh, Which uh, way? That way. Come this over the wall. Keep going. That's it. It's getting close now. That's it. We line the pin up properly, have we? Yeah. Maybe if you're ready. Right, if you can grab that in there, um, and <laughs> you're right, your side. I'm okay this side. Just 
stuck in a stump somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Cylinder heads are back on. I'm, uh, I've just put all the cam followers back in and now I'm just putting the push rods in. Um, and the minute clean the rockers up, the rocker arms can all uh, go back together. They were all numbered. When we took them off, I put them in a piece of wood, numbered them so they all go back in the same place as they came in. Now, if you've ever wondered what the inside of a fluid flywheel looks like, this is it. You've got one side here that is attached to the back of the engine and you've got the other side which spins freely independently of the engine that's attached to the prop shaft and the drive the gearbox. Now what happens, this is filled with oil. So as you speed the engine up, the oil flies to the outside of these vanes and it gets to such a high pressure it locks between the two uh, sets of vanes that run very closely together. And that is how a fluid flywheel works. Now, what we're doing here is just changing the flywheel bearings because it makes sense to do them while well, we've got the engine out because it's a uh, big job to change them when it's all back together. There is one old, worn out fluid flywheel bearing. Six three oh nine. That's good. That's what we've got. Six three oh nine. And there is a new one, a new 6309, made by SKF, which are good quality bearings, I'm led to believe. But I don't make bearings, so I don't know. So one of the last jobs to do of this engine rebuild is to top the flywheel up with some fresh oil. Well, the flywheel's back on, it's all bolted up, so now we can get the bell housing back on, that's the rear support member that holds the engine into the bus. There we go, belt it up, job done. Final set of rockers to go back on the engine. All uh, cleaned, lubricated, and uh, ready to go back on. Line up all the push rods. Right, after many hours of blood, sweat and tears, and not everything going right, the engine is finally back together. It's ready to go back inside the bus. But before we do that, there is one more job we're going to do on this engine. You wouldn't expect us to put it back in looking like that, would you? Of course not. Before it goes back in, it needs a bit of a repaint. And there you have it, one shiny silver RT engine ready to go back in the bus. Now, we didn't film the respraying because, quite frankly, we filmed a lot of painting in the past and we didn't want to put you through it again. So there you have it, the finished product. And some of you Eagle Eye viewers may have noticed that there's still one or two bits missing from this engine, namely the fuel pump and the injectors. And the reason why they've been left off is because we weren't going to repaint them. The injectors are staying bare metal and the fuel pump is already a nice silver colour anyway, so we didn't need to paint that. The exhaust manifold is also missing and that's been left off because that's being painted black. So this engine is now ready to go back inside the RT. The engine is all rebuilt, all painted and ready to go back in. So we're just going to lift it up with the engine ice with the wheels that don't work and get it over to the bus, um, which is a good job. Quite a few people have turned up because we might need about 100 people to try and push this engine ice. 
But we shall see. We are now attempting to put this little engine in this little wheel. Is that wheel in there? Yeah. Oh, We're going to go way too far this way. We're going to push that. Did you need to go? No. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Right. Oh, pump it. Pumping up, you've got to pump it up. Is this going up? Yeah. How are we going to lift this back end up over that? Um, we go high enough so it goes up. Yeah. It'll go high enough, will Yeah. Windy Miller. <laughs> back end needs to come over this way, yeah. Straight Right. Well, it took quite a bit of pushing, but the engine is in place. The front cross member's in, Alan's just doing the last couple of bolts up, and I'm finding the bits for the front rubber engine mounting. It's uh, all coming together, isn't it, Alan? Yes. The best lid plan of most of them. Okay, so the engine is now back in place, as is the radiator fan and the water pump, which is all one unit. We're now going to lift the bus up in the air and tighten the rear engine mount. Well, it's both rather a nervous and exciting moment, because we're going to wind it over with a starter motor for the first time since we put it back together. Um, we're going to make sure we've got oil all around the engine, and then we'll put the fuel pump injectors and all the pipe work back together, and we can give it a proper run. Here we have six new injectors, uh, well, I say new, recon injectors that came out of the engine when we stripped it down, all ready to go back in. So we're going to take the caps off, which isn't too, uh, too difficult. AEC engines have copper sleeves so you don't put copper washers on. And there you go, back into the engine. All overhauled by our friends at Fluid Injection Services, which are literally about 200 yards away from where we are. We've got an injector is what puts the fuel into the top of the engine. Now, the spray pattern is what's created by this nozzle on the end. So the fuel goes in here and it comes out of the nozzle on the end, which sprays it onto the top of the cylinder just before the point where it fires. There we go, six fitted. Next jump, put the fuel pump on. We've got the exhaust manifold on it. <laughs> the pile of bits on the floor is gradually getting less and less. I'm just putting the last three injector pipes back on the engine. We've connected the flexible hoses that connect the fuel pump to the header tank up here. That's all done. And now there's just three injector pipes the uh, the back three left to put on. You ever done ballroom dancing, Dave? <laughs> you had a lovely sidestep. Did right? I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, what I wanted to do the two front things are already there. Yeah. Right. Okay. So they've got to go in their moulds. So they've got to go in the front two holes. If you um, lift it from the bottom, then, Mr. James, there'll be one pull the hand. <laughs> Can you see your end, my end? I'm in. You have to come up at your end. That's it, I'm in. Come on. 
halfway in anyway. You've gone too far down there anyway. Right, that'll be a lopsided. Yeah, we're on the Right, come down. The problem is, this fucking boat's not all the way in. Where are we? That's it. Where's the... I need a hammer. Let's try and drop the top of it now. Okay, have you got it? Can you get a hammer? Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, no, so, no, well, no, and then the bolts just come right back out. Oh. Just watch it climb up to. It was lined up. Yeah. yeah. Everything's now complete, all the water hoses are done, the radiator's back on and uh, now we're going to bleed the fuel up for the injectors before we start it. Um, right, if you... There shouldn't be anything in the way. If you, the starter hook up there, okay. you pull that, it should wind her in. <laughs> right, first time, I'm trying to start the engine. Now, I might have set the pump up wrong, because there's four places it could be, um, but we can't remember where it was when we took it off, so we might have to adjust that. Um, if you try that now, Jill.
So there you go, RT2629 is running again under her own power for the first time in just about a year. Just listen to the sound of that AEC engine. <laughs> it's starting to look like a bus again. A very dusty one. A very dusty one, yeah. And there we go. I'm very pleased with the way it's running and uh, that it's all back together. It's been a lot of hard work, but uh, between us all we've got there and it's back in the bus and running again. Um, there's a small problem with the water pump still weeping slightly after we've had it rebuilt. Um, but overall, very pleased. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. The outtakes are on the way next. <laughs> I squirted then, sorry. Squirted what? <laughs> Brick and clutch. If you really wet yourself. Right, okay. <laughs> What does that feel like? Feels like a drop of goo. It's nice and slippery. Just how I like it. So that's it, the engine is back where it should be. The fan has been fitted and the water pump. The next job is to lift it up in the air and fix the rear engine mount. No, not fix it. Uh, uh, tighten. Do it up. Do it up. No. I'll do it again. So that's it, the engine is back where nature intended, it's back in place. The water pump and fan radiator, uh, oh, oh fucking hell, I've done it right now. Are we recording? Yeah. Okay. You've just told everybody you're having a takeaway. We're having a takeaway tonight. Yeah. But we don't know what. Right, what am I doing? Pouring. Yeah, well, tell them what you're doing. I'm pouring liquid into engine. Uh, what liquid? <laughs> um, this. It's HD30 engine oil, and I'm just about to, after Tim's farted. <laughs> I've moved the bleeding 